And hello, hello, hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. welcome. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another episode of Let's Keep Chatting. My name's Lisa, and we have Elric today. Hi there, and uh, welcome to Let's Keep Chatting. We're really pleased to have you today. And uh, we have Janet from Sage. Hello. Um, Let's Keep Chatting is a podcast where we're chatting with community groups and organisations from around Fife about what they are doing to help different uh, equality groups and the effects of poverty and also how they are coping with the current uh, COVID-19 situation. Yeah, so uh, it's uh, on the podcast, but there's also a video. So. Uh, we will have this uh, available on YouTube with, with subtitles and captions. But uh, basically, that we just chat, and if you have a cup of tea or something to drink, and just sit in and just listen in to what we're talking about. And Lisa will be asking the main questions, but I'm, I'm curious as well, so I'll ask questions too. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, Jana. Um, do, do you want to start off by telling us a little bit of background uh, of Saj? Uh, Scotland, please. Sage, Sage, Scotland. Sage. <laughs> it's all right, it's a strange spelling. And all, <laughs> all it stands for was um, Sally, Sally and Janet Enterprises, because um, my friend Sally and I had started it up way back in 2012. Um, and it's groups for women who experience domestic abuse. That's how we started off. But it certainly evolved from, from that just doing groups for women over the years. In 2014, we got the big lottery funding, which made a massive difference, could go through time then. And it pretty much uh, exploded from that point. So we did, pre-COVID, we did um, groups, face-to-face -face groups for uh, women in Leaven, Glenrothes, Cooper, for Cody, Dunfermline, we've gone as far up as Anstruther, Meath Coast, Crawford, and Dundee, to try and serve the, that area up, up the top there. Um, and it's it's been definitely successful. All the groups have been quite busy. Um, and the women that do finish the, the programmes that we do, tell us that it, it helps them move forward with their life and it helps them from going into further abusive relationships, so it's good. So that we started off just doing the Freedom Programme, but as I say, we were involved. Uh, women were asking that they wanted more, so we do this one called the Toolkit, which is looking at assertiveness, um, confidence, esteem, Resetting your boundaries, because for a lot of us, the boundaries have been shot, whether it's been abuse in adulthood or childhood. Um, we look at grief and loss of a relationship, because we all kind of go into relationships with a thought that it's going to be all nice and lovely, and often when abuse comes along, that story doesn't pan out. Um, Can you talk so, a bit about the, the Freedom Programme? Sorry, it's just about... Uh, we know about it because we've been like promoting it for a while, but if you can tell a bit more about the Freedom Programme itself, that'd be quite helpful, I think. It, it looks at the various tactics of domestic abuse and it's broken down into headings of tactics, as we say. So there's the bully, the jailer, the head worker, the sexual controller, um, the bad parent, um, the persuader, and then the final one is about early warning signs, which brings it all together. So women really are tooled up about going forward, knowing what to look, what um, warning signs to look for. And not that it works every single time, but lots of women have certainly said it's helped them. These sort of warning signs have popped up and they've gone, oh, wait a minute, I'm not going to get into this relationship any further because that's things that I know um, are likely to 
be abusive behaviour. It's not just one behaviour, it's, it's, it's you know, a group of behaviour that you look out for. Okay. And it certainly works. Yeah. See, during COVID, um, during lockdown, do you think you've had more responses from people for help? I, I do, yeah, we've, we've been fairly consistent, but yeah, the, the, the numbers have gone up. But it's not because there's been more domestic abuse in our society, it's because that um, people living in domestic abuse in lockdown, is, it's become intolerable, intolerable, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and, there, you know, there, there's been no escape for any length of time. They have been absolutely locked down in these abusive relationships and it's just too much. And so they've been looking for help either during the lockdown or certainly after it. Uh, and the, the good no, the, the good thing for us is since we've gone online doing it by Zoom, it's reduced so many barriers for women. All right. Okay. Yeah, well, the, the, we were only in Fife because that's what our funding was, now was, but now we're absolutely Scotland wide. We've got people from across Scotland coming. But it's also women have said um, they would never ever have walked through the door to come to a face to face group because their, their anxiety was just far too high. But coming to a Zoom groups worked. But there's the distance, you know, like say that up either end of Fife, it's really it was really difficult and expensive if you're you're doing public transport to get to any of the groups in the town. Mm -hmm. So that's helped people. Child care, we did provide child care, but again for some women it was um, it was a barrier. Um, so it, the times that we're doing the groups, we're doing them at night now. Because because our staff's working at home and, and they have their children to look after, but it's just easier because they're in the house. Um, physical disabilities is, is barriers are down because women don't have to get to us. We just, mm -hmm. we just turn on this button. And um, we have had women from lots of different countries coming on the groups. And the language can be a bit of an issue, and on occasion there's been translators that have come to the group as well, which has been interesting, because the translator's translating to the women and it's all, but we all got used to it in the group and it was fine, and that's what they find. But that will be so much easier now, because um, the two, the translator and the woman can sit in Zoom on mute, and just, sense, and just yeah. it'll just be fantastic. So. Um, and we've got somebody booked in, one person at least booked in to do that in January, so we're very excited about that. Because uh, it will, but again, I suppose the barrier we came to the translator. That's really mm -hmm. interesting that actually, mm -hmm. in some ways, you, you can reach more people because mm -hmm. the, the, the body of transport or actually finding time to be there regularly every week, well, you can just bypass it, you can just directly yeah. go and chat. So, some ways mm -hmm. that's a positive thing, despite being a very, it's making the, the best a very difficult situation though, in many ways. Yes, definitely. And it is, I mean, the, how we done the groups, it's two hours a week for um, 10 weeks. So women are with the same group of people. So you, get, you can build up trust and you can build up, you can you build up friendships with lots of people, even on the face to face. People would keep together and make their coffees and stuff, but a number of the groups are staying on. You know, they've got their allotted time, 10 till 12 on a Wednesday. Somebody's taken responsibility for just keeping in contact with their group members until uh -huh. they're finished. So there's that peer support going on, but more importantly, reducing isolation, which is still pretty bad for a lot of, uh, a lot of us. Um, in Scotland, so that's good. So they're, they're keeping that going. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what, the Zoom will always be a big part of, of what we do now. Um, it is reducing costs for us because venues and childcare are very, very expensive. So hopefully we will go back to that because 
again, some people want to be face to face. They don't like Zoom. Um, and I get that. I was a bit of a reluctant Zoomer. I have. It was hard for everyone, wasn't it? Yeah, was it yeah. difficult for your team as well then? It was a kind of transition. Well, well fortunately, we have um, Vicky, who's very IT savvy and kind of loves it all. And she knows how to work me, really. She just says, well, what about Zoom, Janet? And I'm going, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> she brought another colleague in, so that they were both at me. Ah, uh, I did backup. I did backup. Yeah, yeah, you see. They know how to play me. So, but, but I can't, I'm just so grateful that they did that because it has, it's changed the face of, of what we do. And um, as I say, we're so accessible to so many more people now, which is brilliant. Absolutely. Well, you know what I mean? Brilliant. I wish we weren't in business, but we are. Um, that's 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 really good to hear. We we really like to hear whenever the barriers have been removed to 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 a lot of people because it's it's when you're in a difficult situation, it's hard enough getting out of it. But now if you got additional things like you know costly transport or so, yeah, you know, yeah. nightmares around you before you can actually uh, access the service, it's really difficult. And that, that's that's really good to hear. And but to in the experience, it's is it easy for for people to use the services at home despite the difficult environment? It, 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 so that might be hard to negotiate as well. Uh, like, is it using a phone or a laptop or something? Um, it was difficult for well, it was difficult for me, and, and I was reluctant. So there's lots of people out there who were the same. But um, the team, every team, just did the best we could to, to get people a bit more comfortable with it and and be clear that it's not that hard. Just do it the first time, and you'll find out how how easy it really is. Well, there's been technical difficulties without a doubt, um, definitely, uh, but we've just had to overcome them. And I think that the beauty has been that all of us have been in the same boat at the same time and had to learn new stuff. So that, that's everybody in Scotland, really. So I think um, there's been a lot of, oh, it's fine, it's okay, we'll get there. No, it's not. It's been, it's been nice. It's been nice. Stuff. Not had anything <laughs> awful. No. But um, there's still uh, a lot of things we want to restart. Um, we've started doing a drop-in cafe once a week, just for an hour, so um, people can come in. They get an invitation. They've got to request an invitation just for security and safety. Um, so if they get in contact with it, and it's just it's just very informal. Just see women who are thinking about coming on the programs, who's on them, who's been on them, and the facilitators. And it's just that wee bit um, softer approach before you you take that leap of joining a program. And it is a massive leap. It's a hugely brave thing for anybody to do is to join. A program and a group we are talking about domestic abuse and um, abusive relationships. So, really understand and appreciate the difficulty there. And and for a lot of women, they will sign up, but they won't come the first time. But usually, they do find us again. They come back, or they, they, they join at a later date because um, we do start three times a year: January, April, and summer. It's been a bit different this year. We've not had any breaks this year, so we've kept going. Mm. Thank you, all people. Uh, sorry, I'm very curious, but uh, have you uh, noticed any patterns, any uh, any specific changes for specific groups? You go like there's been a way more demand in some ways, or uh, or something has changed. So you're saying obviously there's this bias mm -hmm. about coming online, but uh, in terms of uh, the women that you you've been working with. I didn't notice something specific in terms of um, what they talk I, about. I, I would say it's opened the doors for women who are working full time or are in full time education because our group were during the day. So there was, they couldn't, unless they, they managed to work out with their employer or whoever, um, it was fairly impossible. So that group of people has gone up because they can do it at night. 
Right. But also, there's a lot of women working at home who who, who do no, do negotiate with their employers to say, "Can I have two hours off on Wednesday morning or whatever?" So, yeah, oh, right. we that up. We, we did. Uh, we <clears throat> we were doing face to face groups for women with learning difficulties, uh, and that was that was going really really well. Um, and they were enjoying it, and it was it was great fun. It was actually great fun to do with them, but we've not managed to get that off the ground. Zoom in, mm-hmm. just for the, the sheer reason that we've just not had any time to concentrate on um, joining up with the the agencies to get to get the women and girls involved in it again. Oh, and but- then, same way L LBTI, we were we were so close to that one starting off, but. Um, it's just kind of not everything for six. We've got a young mum's group starting next January when they all start up again. So um, that's anybody from 17. So um, it's just slowly, slowly. And, and what we as a, a I mean, there's only me and four part-timers, five part-timers. So we're doing the best we possibly can to, to keep it going. Wow. You seem to be doing good, you know, being able to adapt and create all this to take away that stigma, you know, that going online is not as bad as it is for some people, you know, and they can still make that connection, you know, if they're needing that little bit extra help. Yeah, yeah. Another thing that that's helped me, once we've helped women get on the Zoom, it opens up a whole new world for them as well. Mm-hmm. Because they've got a wee bit confidence of, of doing it with other people and, and stuff like that. I'm sure there's lots of agencies and all that as well, but it, that was a definite benefit. Women were coming back and saying, oh my goodness, it's open. There's so many other people I, I can talk to now and they uh, get support from. So that was, that was an unforeseen benefit for folk as well. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, and, and we zoom as a team as well to keep ourselves because that's the big miss for us in the office is, is speaking to your colleagues just to because it is tough listening to people's stories and um, that was our sort of way of getting past it. But we zoom a lot. I was going to uh, ask because having that a chat after you you've been emotionally involved mm-hmm. is is mega important that kind of debrief so mm-hmm. so i guess you spend the day on zoom then at this rate <laughs> pretty much yeah and then friday night zoom in with jen <laughs> why is it always jen that helps <laughs> i've been told so many times mm-hmm. yes lisa take jen it uh, totally gets you know work. <laughs> jen has the answer <laughs> Wow. <laughs> all sorts with all sorts. Some of the groups, um, the ones that you know, have stayed on as as the wee uh, peer support thing, they're, they're going to be having a range of Zoom Christmas parties coming up, all of which I will be attending. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> you get the gym bottles in a row. <laughs> So, I, so your team is finding a way to stay to stay are, on top of finding a way somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's good that you are having an online Christmas party, you know, and yeah. you know, still celebrate Christmas yeah. and everything. Yeah, we, we Lisa is organizing all kinds of online events to try and yeah. connect people <laughs> to that's that's a good thing. No, that's really good. It's really good to, to hear that that's happening. So so uh, so I, I'm, I'm full of questions. So there's a lot of stuff you mentioned there. So people are, or at least they might be interested in that. So the Freedom Program, it's a program people can sign up. And it's you said it's three times a year. And then you also mentioned uh, a toolkit. Uh, so is that in addition? And is that also uh, something that uh, can be accessible? Is that through your website? Or what? what what's the way uh, to yeah, find out? And we're, we're bringing on a new program um, next year as well because... Uh, you know, we've got to find different ways to suit different people, and time moves on, and you've got you've got to update and and move on. So we're um, we're thinking about well, we are going to bring a new program on next year as well. Um, but it's really important that women come to the the first program, whatever it's going to be, because they have to truly understand the the extent of 
what's happened to them and the, the, um, the huge range of impacts it's had on every area of their life. And it's only really then that people can come to terms with what's happened and start the recovery process. And we're not we're not the we're not the cure for all, but it's the beginning of a journey for a lot of women. A lot of women mm -hmm. just do our programmes and they do move on, but for others, um, the trauma is so so bad they do need additional help. And it's and we've got great links with um, all the other abuse agencies in Fife that we sort of refer back and forward. So um, yeah. Everybody's an individual and they'll take their own time and wait to understand and learn and, and move forward from it all. Okay, that's really good too. So you're taking that trauma approach, trauma informed kind of like the long term impact on someone and yeah. and basically recovering from trauma. Yeah, and we do, we, again, pre COVID, we were going into schools and speaking to boys and girls. Uh, about relationship abuse so that was going really well because it's important that boys and girls learn um, what's acceptable in a relationship uh, and yeah we, we really only work with women but we you know we do know that there are lots of men out there and definitely in same sex relationship where domestic abuse is going on but we've only got the time to work with our, our group which is dominantly women and girls mm -hmm. Um, oh, actually, no. oh. <laughs> well, that's pretty good to know. So, um, so how would someone uh, find out when when the next program is is starting, or how to sign up, or well, anything like this? So, on our, there's on our website, I'll give you all the information, and we have got our Facebook page that we're. Because of funding, our funding is really precarious. Precarious? Okay. Dodgy. I'm just saying dodgy. Dodgy. <laughs> just, it's rare. It's not there. It's very. Well, it's rare. It's not there. <laughs> try to use big words, but oh my god. <laughs> so um, our, our funding is really dodgy just now. So we're, we're putting in funding applications left, right, and centre. But we're also going to be launching a crowdfunding page to go along mm -hmm. um, and a Facebook campaign and stuff like that in the hope that people will um, donate to us to, to keep us going. Because we can, we can keep going probably till May and then we're, don't know, don't know. But Question mark. Do, do share that with us. We'll post it on on the on our Facebook and, and YouTube, mm -hmm. and also the, the podcast page. That's really important. It sounds like mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not much time, to be honest. But it's like it's quite not, soon. No. Yeah. And, yeah. and we've been working at it since for a good year, really. Um, and there's a fund, a specific fund for domestic abuse that's been called, and that was our, our big one. And the big lottery have been really kind to us. We've got six and a half years funding from them, so that we can't really go back there. But we'll, we'll keep plodding on, not for the first time, not for the last. And I just go and get the book so I can show you. Of course, I, yeah, yeah, you have to talk. It's a, this is a, a publication that uh, I think it was a year ago it came out or something like that. And um, it's a really interesting one. I will steal the funder. That's definitely a nice funder, but you might have seen it. Sorry, cut off, Lisa. Sorry. Sorry, I'm saying I think I've seen just the title of the book on Facebook. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's it. The launch. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> so it's birthdays coming up on the 26th of November. So that's we're going to try and link everything up with um with that as well because I mean, that's 22 women who use their service and they wrote their story of their abuse. But it's also the story of them coming out the other end. So it's, it's a story, the story of the hope that life does and can change after living with domestic abuse. Whether it's seven months or 25 years, life can change. So it's, it's, um. So this, this is published by you at Sage. And, uh, so money's when people do buy it actually go back to you. Yeah. Hopefully. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's a not bit. a lot of money in it, um, 
because of I'm not mentioned the online. Et cetera. So if people would like to contribute, they better go to your crowdfunding. And, um, because um, even that we we happily send a book out to anybody if okay. they just emailed us and that and we make, we make five pounds that way. Paid off. Okay. Um, and we're we're going to do our own eBay uh, page as well, whatever page marketplace. I don't know. <laughs> Stuff online. <laughs> I'm not in charge of any of that. I just... <laughs> But, Delegation, what, that's the word. <laughs> that's the so one. Definitely moving to online. It's going to be definitely a thing. Okay. So that's definitely, so that's really good to know. We, we, we'll definitely share the crowdfunding. And uh, so if anyone is listening out there, well, that's yeah. definitely uh, a worthwhile project to actually dig into there. Uh, so yeah, we'll cross that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I was just going to say that's good that these women were able to express themselves you know, as a way of, you know, telling their story and how the effects so other people can, you know, see, you know, the there is light at the end of the tunnel, you know, if you tr try to get out of this type of, oh, I, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, relation, you know, relationship kind of thing. I don't know if I'm saying this properly. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's a, it's a book that should be read, you know. But, but you're absolutely right, because if it's not happened to you or happening to you, without yeah. a doubt, you know at least one person who who's lived with it or is currently living with it, because, mm. you know, it's still the, the stats of like one in three women will have or are experiencing domestic abuse at some point in their life. So we all know a lot of people. We just don't know because there's still that wrongly feeling of shame and blame that victims, I hate that word victims, but women who've experienced domestic abuse carry about with them. And yeah. the blame and the shame does not belong to them, it belongs to the person that is the abuser. So, so it's still quite hidden, although much, much better than it was, um, a lot of people just won't talk about it because we get judged mm. as well. You know, you have people say, well, if it was that bad, why did you not leave? If it was that bad, why did you not go back? Why did you go back? And it's that not understanding how truly difficult it is to, to leave and how difficult it is to stay away when you have an abuser um, picking away at your, your head and threatening mm -hmm. you, making you frightened. So, yeah, it's... Everybody should read it to get an understanding of what it's like to live it and, and to get away from it. Excellent. We'll definitely mm -hmm. put a link to the to the book as well. So it's we have got an Instagram page. It is her story. The and it's for year anniversary, you said. Is, was it was it the year? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah we had a, a launch in the Rothes Hall and it was jam packed wow. and it was it was amazing. I was up and everything. <laughs> I think I think yeah, that was where she was mentioning. I remember uh, talking about it in detail. Oh, so, yeah, I can't believe that was a year ago. That's like I know, I know, it's scary, absolutely scary. Wow. Okay. So, but, Twitter at sage sage underscore Scotland. Oh, this will all be on the website though. And then at Facebook slash sage Scotland. And I don't know what I don't know what the Instagram one is. Oh my god. No worries, we'll find it. <laughs> we'll find it. Lisa and I will we'll, we'll find all the links and, and make sure to share it all as right, it post afterwards. No worries about that. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, but, um, but, you know, like a lot of charities we'll all be facing, we'll all be chasing the same ever yeah. in pots of money and more and more charities going after it and it's, it's going to be difficult for the whole third sector for quite a long time, I think. And um, although that domestic abuse is our passion, I fully understand that everybody else has their own passion. So I wish us all well and luck. For mm. So, very good. More questions for me. But if someone is 
is a bit like unsure about what it means to join a group or tries to understand a bit better, can they just give you a buzz like without like, jumping straight into joining a group or nothing like that, but just contact mm -hmm. contact you and talk a bit about it. And yeah, right. yeah, and I'm actually I'm very glad you brought that up because um, a high percentage of women don't know they're experiencing domestic abuse. They may do they just have this feeling that something's wrong, or they're feeling they're feeling frightened, or they're upset all the time, or they're they're walking on eggshells and the frightened to express their opinion or give a, you know, do anything that's potentially going to upset their partner. Um, so, yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that because we do have this view of domestic abuse that you're a battered wife or it's, you know, it's, it's high level emotional and psychological abuse where when often it is, it's, Abusers want power and control over someone else, and they'll do anything mm -hmm. to take away your self confidence, your self esteem, your self belief, self belief, so they can get mm -hmm. power over you. So, yeah. is that like um? Oh, I'm trying to think of the term because my kids have been teaching me new terms, and of course, it's gaslighting. I Gaslight, and that's the term I'm trying to think of. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good description. Gaslight and this um, uh -huh. making you feel as if you're you're a yeah. all the time. And did I say that? Did I do that? I'm yeah, because I, I did not know th this term before until my kids explained it to me properly. You know, a few years ago, and um, what is it? I I. To me, like you said, you know, people might just think, oh, it's just, you can just say mental or that and everything. And then it got given the term gaslight and, you know, and, you know, maybe folk that are younger, that are in these situations, understand that term better than people that are older, you know. Well, I think it's a term that's been going about for a long time. It's just been re used again. Yeah, yeah, and it, I mean, it is a good description, though, but, um, uh, 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 it does describe and and for women and, and for them to phone up and just have that chat going is what do you think is this a, is this wrong is this abusive is he trying to manipulate me is he trying to make me think I'm mad is really really good because it's it's just reinforcing or reaffirming what you're thinking anyway mm -hmm. because because you've been made to think that you're wrong about everything, you can't quite trust yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's good to get confirmation from somebody that's, yeah, yeah. that you really don't know and you're being able to talk to them and say, you know, what you said, you know, is this the right thing kind of thing? You know, am I being affected this way? You know, and you're sort of confirming it for them, you know? Uh -huh. So it's good to have that person outside the sort of the bubble to look inwards and you know say you know you are right about what's affecting you and it's not that i mean there's no way on this earth that we tell anybody what to do you know we're not saying oh that he's oh no you need to leave there's none of that it's it's everybody's own journey and and as they learn because it is kind of a learning thing because we're not actually told what a good relationship and a bad relationship is when we're young. That's true. That's not. It doesn't come out in the book, does it? No, it doesn't <laughs> really. It's, it's, uh, so it, it, and it's absolutely about their, their own decisions and what they want to do at the end. Yeah, um, absolutely no pressure. And the, you know, the, I think the amazing thing about the group is no, nobody judges anybody else. Nobody seems well. If that was me. I would just, I wouldn't be putting up with that, I'd be off. Because everybody is on an equal footing. And, and you know, women yeah. and kids, things like, oh, for God's sake, for the first time in my life, I feel normal. I don't feel like the freak in the room. Not my words, but, you know, this is what women are saying. Oh, I don't feel stupid. Oh, I'm not that sick after all. So it's all that kind of thing that, that you know, the power is from the other women. The power is from the other women in the group, and that's who they, they gain strength from and get their own power back. But, um, 
we just hang about drinking tea, do we? Cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Excellent. Sometimes all that helps change uh, the situation, just understanding what's going on, the context, and go like, what's going on here? I just have someone yeah. to actually check and double check with. That sounds really, really good. So if someone wants to find out, we can just give you a buzz. Just email, yeah. phone, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, can do a self referral on the website as well. Um, but we're, you know, we're happy to email back and forward for a wee while if somebody's not feeling mm -hmm. ready to talk. Um, just anything that makes it okay for the person who's thinking about coming along. We uh, are open to anything and I mean, we keep in touch with people because some people do need extra support over the period of the group and after and that's that's what we're there for as well mm -hmm. and we, we estimated that during lockdown we probably or, or the, the pandemic we've probably taken about over 800 phone calls and emails that kind of support not saying, you know, because some of them can be repeat, but um, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of uh, people needing a bit more support as well. And this is across the whole of Scotland? Or is um, to, well, well, we can, it did kind of go Scotland wide quite quickly because um, we were asked on to uh, Kay Adams' show. Um, BBC Scotland, so it kind of went out quite quickly and we were getting people swimming through Glasgow and Edinburgh, Edinburgh quite quickly. But now it's borders, highlands everywhere. And a lot through other women's aid groups because we sent the information out to women's aid groups. Um, so we're working quite close, closely with Perth Women's Aid. Obviously five women's aid. Um, but Perth Women's Aid, Sterling Women's Aid, and, um, what's the other one? So, Referring women to us, so um, make sure to include include those numbers and links as well. And see your um your chat sessions that you have. Is that face to face? Or is that virtual? That's all. Everything's online. Everything's virtual. Everything's online. Okay, okay. We make sure to post that. So uh, don't don't put the office number in because we will not be there after the next. So it's all on Zoom and Instagram as well. I'll find it. No worries. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're getting there with all. Me, I would just still be using a pen and paper. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, see that? it works. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> don't worry about it's it. Bad, right. Seriously, guys, don't worry about it. We'll find it. We'll go on the website. I will make sure to share it. But no, that's really good. It's really good. I would say it's. Really good that you spend some time to share this and and actually uh i don't know it's 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 heartening to, to hear that actually some of the barriers that could actually prevent someone to actually just check in and just have a, yeah. the first conversation with you that that kind of can be addressed now but, and, it, uh, and it, i mean there's there's ladies there's women that are coming that are in their 70s and 80s wow so it's it's everything from 16 right through to I think the oldest woman was, she was 86 and she was, oh well, she was amazing. You, she was just amazing. So. You, you don't hear too much of stories of, of uh, older people talking about uh, domestic abuse as such, or at least I haven't heard it personally. It's, is, is this something that you, your group would have seen a lot or is it more? Yeah, we've had, well, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have um, the numbers in uh -huh. front of me, but there's enough to be, yeah, we could there's and, and they're in the book, the women are in the book as well. Um but I think I mean they have a whole range of their own barriers, older women. Um even just the, the, the period of time where you got married was that you, you made your bed, you you lay in it, you just uh -huh. stay put. And now as you as if you're getting older, there's the worry about pensions. If the house gets sold, you've not got enough money really to buy another house. Where do you go? Maybe haven't worked or you you've got your pension will be a lot smaller. It's just so much ill health, theirs and their partners, dementia, all these sorts of things. 
come into play when I'm people are getting a bit older. But as I say, there are women who are, who are still leaving. They just go, no, even after 50 years, go, no, I'm not doing this anymore. And they go. All right. I think anybody who leaves, regardless of what their circumstances, is phenomenal and an amazing person. But, um, you know, a woman in her 70s or 80s going and have had enough. It's quite amazing. That's good to know. We, we'll definitely share with our older people's mailing list as well. And, and yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, it, it's been good to hear, you know, that you've been able to just be able to be there and everything and sort of be like an extra sort of bubble connection for them mm -hmm. to get hold of during this period. Yeah, it's, it's been interesting. It's been tough as well. It's been really tough, but um, as I say, awfully glad we did it, and we did it a way back to April. So, um, well, we went to share as much information before. I think, isn't it the end of the year is a, is a really difficult tension moment, like the festive period and New Year and Ogmany and all that, there, there tends to be quite a, a spike in calls. I was I was seeing that last year. Is that something that you've seen as well? Uh, um, not really, because well, no, because there's it's shut for starters. Um, but my understanding is that lots and lots of families will hold it together over the festive period. Okay. For the sake of their children to give them a nice Christmas, albeit they might not be having a nice Christmas, you understand? Yeah. So but it's that thing. Hold it together quite a bit. This, we're sold this, oh, Christmas is for families and all this. So um, I think a lot of mums try and keep it together until into the new year and then they go, oh, need to go now, need to go now. But, okay. And are you and are you open? You know, be able to. Is your services uh, over Christmas easily? You know, can they contact you over Christmas over the Christmas period? No, no. We we'll, we'll have um, a couple of at least a couple of weeks uh -huh. shut because, to be honest, we actually need a break um, because it has been a full on year. You know, we didn't really we didn't have a summer break because we just kept doing starting up programs and stuff so um we, we, want, we need to as a new team just come together and have a bit of downtime until it all starts again in january which is what we, we look forward to um, three, you know, we never need to need time off. I, I think that sounds like a good idea <laughs> Because, you deserved a break. <laughs> you deserved a break because I, I'm I'm guessing it's been non-stop since was it 16 March, 18 March lockdown. Like most charities, you must have had a a long stretch. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, I, I, so many. So I do many. hope you get a bit of recovery time. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> Gin time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a theme there. So if anyone <laughs> wants to, to send a, a present, <laughs> a donation. I'm not, I'm uh, not fussy. I'll drink wine or vodka. I'm not, <laughs> oh, I have well. no kids in the house, so it's all good for me. I'm not. Well, <laughs> Janet and her team needs uh, a donation. Janet, <laughs> Janet, <laughs> Janet, <laughs> we can leave the toast, the, toast, the toast to your team when you take some time off. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's going to be gin, I guess. So yes, okay. <laughs> No, that's great. Thank you so much. That's amazing. So uh, I'll make sure to add after this video when it goes on, on YouTube and when it's posted, I'll add all the links. So if anyone's watching now, just click on the links. It'll be all in there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Good. So that's us coming to the end of our interview. So thank you, Jana. Thank you. And hopefully, you know, you get your rest period over Christmas. <laughs> And the funding is not dodgy anymore. That, 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 that'll be good. That's a good wish for. Oh, oh. Dodgy's our new word. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's brilliant. <laughs> all right. Well, okay, all the best. So, Thank you very right. much for Thank chatting. You. Thank you. All the best. We'll bye. Be bye. 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 bye.